Hey everyone, my name is Sarah Kiel Cruz and I'm the camp coordinator with Comfort Zone Camp. We are a Richmond-based nonprofit that was founded in 1998 by our CEO, Lynn Hughes. We provide free bereavement programming for kids ages 7 to 17 who have experienced the loss of a sibling, parent, primary caregiver, or significant person. We have camps year-round up and down the East Coast and out West as well. At camp, we do lots of typical camp activities. We have a bonfire, we sing songs and do skits, we have an arts and crafts, we play games, and we even go to the pool. But we also have peer-based support groups that are led by mental health professionals. These groups are called Healing Circles and they meet multiple times throughout the weekend. These groups are a place where campers can feel safe, they can share their story, and they have the ability to navigate and learn all of the tricky parts of grief and loss, as well as work on building healthy coping skills and resiliency. So that's a little bit about us and what we do. Um, I mainly do behind the scenes logistical stuff to make sure that camp is an awesome experience for all the campers. And we are so thrilled to be joining the Greater Richmond Scan for their second annual Resiliency Week. And I'm really glad to be here today with you guys to talk to y'all a little bit about what resiliency is and how to build it. So what is resiliency? You might already know. But resiliency is our ability to bounce back after experiencing difficult life situations, like the death of a family member. We know that every single person has a story. Every camper that comes to Comfort Zone has a unique experience that they can share if they feel comfortable. We know that campers are not broken. We don't need to be fixed just because we've experienced grief and loss. Are we going to have bad days? Absolutely. There's always going to be tough days to navigate with grief because we know that grief isn't linear. But what we can do is work on building our resiliency through healthy coping skills so that when we are having those bad days, we can bounce back. Building resiliency is like having your own personal imaginary toolkit filled with tools to help you. So each time you are working on an activity that can help you build resiliency, it's like you're just putting more tools into your toolkit that can help you bounce back faster. So those things can be totally unique to you. It can be any activities that make you feel good and help you build resiliency. And then before you know it, you've got this awesome toolkit so that when you're having bad days, you can go in and look at your healthy coping skills and look at the ways that you can build resiliency to help you feel better. So one of the ways that we can focus on building resiliency is through this really cool activity called a coping box. So come on y'all and I'm going to show you how to make one. All right, everybody. So I'm going to show y'all how to make this really cool activity that's called a coping box, which is another tool that we can put in our resiliency toolkit. You'll need some supplies for this activity. The first thing is going to be a box. It can really be any box. You could find a shoe box, uh, maybe an old box that had like some sparkling water in it or any kind of box in your house or container that you can decorate or cover how you want. Um, you'll also need something to color with. So markers are a great option, but if you wanna use paint, crayons, colored pencils, stickers, really whatever you have on hand and wanna use. I also grabbed some pens, pink's my favorite color, so I got some of those uh, to write with. And then I also got some blank paper and some scissors because you'll need that for stuff that goes inside the box. So step number one is to cover the box and decorate it uh, however you want on the outside. You could put maybe something like your loved one's mantra or maybe if they had a catchphrase, or you could write words that remind you of them. You could draw pictures. Maybe your loved one had a really pretty garden and really liked flowers or maybe their favorite season was winter time and they loved Christmas. You can really decorate it however you want, um, whatever reminds you most of your loved one. You could also add stickers, jewels, you could put a photo, the options honestly are endless. It's whatever you want to best describe or memorialize your loved ones. Once you finish decorating your box, you'll want to take your scissors and your paper and cut some strips. So super easy. You can make them whatever size you want. Uh, if you have a big box, maybe some big strips, but if your box is a little bit smaller, you could do some tiny ones too. You also don't have to use white paper. If you'd like to use some colors, you can definitely use colored paper too. Once you've finished cutting your paper, you should have a lot of strips. 
probably like 20 is probably a good starting point. Um, that's how many I added because the next step to this activity is to think of things that make you feel better when you're having a bad day, things that build resiliency. So for me, those things could look like going to get some ice cream or taking a walk. I love to go for walks when I feel like I need to regulate my body and just get moving. It could be hugging my mom or maybe scheduling dinner with a friend or a FaceTime date since it's COVID. It can honestly be anything that you think of that makes you feel better when you're having a bad day. So think about what cheers you up. As you can see, I've thought of a lot of things that help cheer me up when I'm not feeling like myself and help me bounce back. I really love ice cream, so that's always something that I want to do. I love my cats, so giving them a hug always gives me that warm, fuzzy feeling. I really love listening to Ariana Grande. You can never go wrong with her. Painting my nails is one of my favorite self-care activities. Sometimes I want to just go outside, be with nature, and breathe in the fresh air. Other times I just want to have a solo dance party around my house, jam into my favorite music. Sometimes I feel like I need to learn something new and get my brain going. So maybe I'll listen to a podcast or read a book or research something on the internet that I don't know about. So these are just a few examples of ways that I build resiliency through certain tools in my toolkit. Yours could be something similar or they could be something different. Maybe you have different ideas that help you build resiliency and bounce back or maybe you have really special things that you do, certain activities that remind you of your loved one. For me, every time I see a rose, it makes me think of my dad. So I really love to go take walks because then I can see all the beautiful rose bushes around the city and they make me think of my dad. That's also a healthy coping skill that I could put into my toolkit. When you've finished and you've come up with your activities that you can put in your toolkit and you've written on all your strips of paper, the last step is just to gather them all up and put them in your box. You don't have to fill out all your pieces of paper. You might have some blank ones left over and that's okay because maybe a couple weeks from now, you might think, hey, I just thought of a new coping skill or I just did a new activity and I loved it and that's definitely something I wanna put in my coping box. So always have some blank paper handy because it's definitely something that you might think of and want to add. Um, you can add to this as you get older or you change or if you want to redecorate the outside. Really this box is meant to grow with you and to be part of your toolkit. And it's pretty cool when you're having a bad day and you open up the box and you've got all this stuff inside. All of these things that help you build resiliency and remind you of how to get back to feeling like yourself again and to get through those hard days. Grief is a lifelong thing. Are we gonna have bad days? Absolutely, we are. But just because it doesn't ever go away doesn't mean that we can't build resiliency to help us bounce back to how we were feeling and get back to feeling like ourselves. So if you enjoyed this activity and you're a kid who has experienced a loss and you think camp might be a good fit for you, please feel free to reach out. We do this type of activity and lots of others to work on building resiliency at camp to help us cope with grief and loss. So um, even though we've experienced these bad things, we know that life goes on. Things keep moving. I experienced a loss when I was a kid and I know that it was this really hard thing, but I've got all these awesome tools in my toolkit that, I've helped, that have helped me um, to build resiliency and to bounce back. So even though I'm gonna have some bad days, I know I've got what I need and I know that I'm a resilient person and I can go to my toolkit anytime to work on my healthy coping skills, to keep building resiliency and to keep moving forward. So thank you so much again to the Greater Richmond Scan for allowing us to be part of this uh, Resiliency Week. We're so excited to connect with you guys through this lens of grief and loss and to talk more about how to build resiliency and how to keep going.